Did I make it? Did did we get here? We ready to go? How's that? Is, is that sounding good? Hello? Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be in your part of the world. Welcome back to C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. It's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio De uh, Azure Developer Experience and .NET teams, and, and we're going to be talking about ASP.NET MVC today, 
It's so good to see you. Welcome in. My apologies for things running a little bit late. Um, we had a, a couple configuration issues upstream from me that weren't quite connecting when I was testing and getting things ready. So, uh, always fun when you have to go and reconnect and <clears throat> get all the things working and connecting and talking to each other again. It's my gosh. It's like, it's like gluing everything back together again. Thank you so much for your patience here. Um, Motaz, good to see you. Carl Edwards, uh, issues are there to keep us on our feet. All good. Thank you so much. Let me head over. Let's bring up the chat. The chat room, of course, is here, you know, because I'm live broadcasting. This is a live broadcast where we're going to be teaching about ASP.NET Core MVC. We're going to be answering your questions, and I start things off with 40 minutes of Ask Me Anything. If you're watching the recording, there are chapter markers just below. You're welcome to skip ahead, but some of the questions you might see come up, you might find a little bit interesting, you might want to check out, and of course, I read all the comments in all of these videos and uh, respond to them regularly. I'm not going to say immediately, but regularly. So, hey, let me bring on the chat, and let's let's talk with them. There, see, the chat's right there, along with my timer, so I, I can keep up here. Um, so good to see you, folks. Uh, Sharaf is here. Good afternoon to you in Egypt. Watch my uh, session. was very inspiring. Have not missed any of the .NET sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharaf. Good. So good to see you. Uh, is that Jin Korax? Hello. Thanks for the thumbs up. Chris Spellman, good morning to you. I got to get some coffee into me. It's been it's been a rough morning. It, my teleprompter's not working over here for some reason. Uh, it's been frustrating for me. Good morning, Ergenrod on Twitch. Cigar out. Uh, hello on YouTube. Excuse me. Raphael Wolf is here from Brazil. Sajid in Mumbai. Hello, hello. Um, good morning, Arturo in Mexico. Good to see you. Um, do, 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 do. Continuing to scroll through here. Uh, Bill Jean, uh, hello. Good to see you. Kryptonian on Twitch. Marco, good evening to you in Rome. So I'm seeing uh, Brazil. I saw some, uh, some North American folks. We've got Europe covered. Um... So South America, North America, Europe. Uh, I see some folks here from Asia. But sound is good. Thank you, Oregon Rod. Appreciate the sound check. Jimmy Engstrom is here. Hello, hello. Yeah, they got the mic. Um, uh, Jojanery, hello. G greetings to you. New anointing. Hello, Smab. Good to see you. Laughing Ninjas, good morning to you over there on Twitch. Minoj, hello. Sebastian Small, hello to you as well. Gustavo uh, asks, Fritz, what, are the, what do I think about the difference between MVC and minimal API? Here's our first big question of the morning. Morning my time, so I'll, I'll call it morning. What do I think of the differences between MVC and minimal API? Um, minimal, minimal API, I think, I think is great for building those little crud interactions. A quick create, read, update, delete. Something that you, you don't want to think too much about. You don't want to spend a lot of time writing, and you want the fastest possible interaction. When you need to start getting some business logic in there, you need to build something that's a little bit more complex, that's when I'll move to MVC-like controllers and start interacting that way. For something small, where I can just inject my, uh, my data access layer, write one or two lines of code, it makes perfect sense to use minimal API. I can put all those things in one file, put it off to the side. Things run great. We even started building a little project over on my Twitch channel called Instant APIs. You can find that at github.com slash c -sharp fritz slash slash instant apis i think it's yeah um and we're uh, right let me let me share that link real quick um make sure that i have it right <laughs> um i think it's here and instant apis there it is we wrote a blog post about this instant apis are a way for you to take minimal apis and generate all those typical endpoints that you want for interacting with um with entity framework and there's also some content in there that'll help get you interacting with data that's based in a json file let me get my dunning glasses on here say that i didn't even have time to to clean them and get everything started here i am in a mess this morning look at that i even went and just dropped yeah charging cable for my phone thanks and you can just go over there if you want um so lots we can do with minimal apis 
But I think there's a, a time where minimal APIs can get too big, too much going on there. And uh, I like to keep them kind of focused. Hello to you in Scotland, Broke Boys Game Studio. Good to see you. Uh, is that Rafus? Uh, on YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon to you. Soma in Nigeria. So we got Africa covered now as well. North America, South America, Africa, Europe. Uh, I, I thought we had some folks from from Asia chiming in. Anybody from Australia? From No, I still got a schmutz area on there on my glasses. Hello, uh, uh, Panagiotis in Greece. Uh, the .NET channel is providing some wonderful content, says Ramanan. For everyone to learn that's the goal absolutely alan is here from uganda africa uh motaz you continue to repeat that you don't have to keep telling us that you're from palestine thank you 5 p.m in the uae says avis and watching with a cup of tea fantastic hope you're having a, a great day there in the uae uh v4 lon m is here from kosovo good to see you quincy is here from nicaragua hello hello johnny b cat Thank you so much for tuning in. You like the talk on crud? Thank you. Jay is here from Florida, enjoying the good content. Arif from Indonesia. There's one of our folks dialing in from Asia. Aheo from PH. Uh, PH. Philippines? PH. Help me out. Uh, hello to you, Hassan in Dubai. Oh, my gosh. A couple of folks there on the, is it is it called the Arabian Peninsula? Do I have that right? Um, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Jimmy Ingstrom put our business logic into a service and use only minimal APIs, which works great. That is a fantastic idea. Hello, uh, Caro Covell. Uh, what, what is the advantage? What's the advantage of minimal APIs? The advantage is there's a lot of middleware that goes on in order to wire up controllers that doesn't get launched. You actually, when you write minimal APIs, are writing directly on the middleware. You're interacting directly on the network directly on the metal. There is nothing between you and the request. So the things that are conveniences to make it easier for us to build with controllers, as we're going to see more of later today and when we, when we get into our demo, we get into our demo project, um, those things go away and you get to work directly with the request, uh, request context, actually. Um, so it ends up being significantly faster. Lightfire, hello to you in Egypt. Carl Edwards is here from South Africa. Fantastic. Great to see you, Carl. Uh, Sigun is here from Nigeria. Hello to, uh, is that Leger in Senegal? Oh, my goodness. Welcome in. Uh, Silmar is here from Brazil. What's my cap today? I went with my Penn State hat. I, I, I took off and I, you know what? No, let's go to the Xbox app. Let's go to the Xbox app. What am I thinking? Penn State was my, the school that I went to and um, really enjoy wearing that hat. But you know what? I have the Xbox hat sitting right here staring at me. Just put on the Xbox hat. Everybody likes Xbox. Philippines. That's what I thought there. How you doing, Miguel? Uh, Cigar. Hello to you in India. Lou is here from Connecticut. Uh, is it Du from Turkey? Taufik in Indonesia. I hope I'm pronouncing these names somewhere close. Uh, Mohammed from Egypt is here. Follow constantly. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Appreciate you watching and enjoying and following along with the uh, with the content. Jcom80 on Twitch is here from the San Francisco Bay. My goodness, the Pacific Coast. A little bit early. Hope you're enjoying a nice cup of coffee, a little bit of breakfast out there. Uh, Rodrigo is here from Chile. Rahul says greetings from India. Good to see you, Rahul. Regathian on Twitch says I prefer minimal APIs when I care about the route hierarchy. Hmm. Continue. So much easier when I don't have to worry about bundling related stuff into controllers while also getting the routes nicely grouped. But see, you can specify your routes inside of controllers as well. You, you can specify and lay those out however you'd like. It's up to you. So, there we go. No Wiz is here from Perth, Western Australia. Late evening there. Friends, we've got six of the seven continents covered. We've got folks here from six of the seven continents that is awesome I, where's my where's my tada i have a tada button where is it six of the seven continents it, it took a second it, it, it's slow waking up here just like all my other gear let me get some music playing here in the background we'll get we'll get into we'll talk a little bit about today's project and answer some more questions here as we're getting ready i'm going to grab 
Yeah, I like this synthwave playlist. This is Stream Beats by Harris Heller. This is music that is DMCA free, royalty free. You can listen to it wherever you'd like, including here on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, doesn't matter. Royalty free, listen to it all the places that you like. There's all kinds of genres available on the website, streambeats.com, and there's playlists available there for you as well. Amazon Music, Apple Music, and uh, Spotify, like I'm listening to right now. Uh, you can even download the music if you have a, a poor connection to the internet. You want to make sure you have a constant uh, flow of music for you. That's fantastic. I like listening to this music, the Synthwave playlist, because it's kind of groovy, kind of tech, and, it, and upbeat. So... Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Thank you so much to Harris Heller for his support in making this music available for us to listen to today. Um, Amit is here from Pune, India. Good to see you. Uh, Fazal from Bhopal, India. Good evening. Uh, Ken Burke on YouTube asks, can I give it a quick rundown of what we're going to see today? What's the schedule like? So here's the deal. Here's the deal, okay? Um, we're going to start with I'm, I'm shifting. I did this series previously, and and it's one thing to go through MVC, to go through ASP.NET Core. We went through Blazor and said, you know, here's the features. And there's something that really landed with me as we finished the Blazor series. And it's it's one thing to describe and say, well, here's the various features of this framework and how you can put the pieces together. Why don't we actually do that? Why don't we actually put those pieces together? Why don't we actually build a sample website live, together, open source, here on stream? We'll take another three, four weeks, and we'll hit all the topic areas. We'll discuss all the features that we want to cover in building this demo website. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we're talking. Now we can discuss feature decisions and and have those those important discussions as as a development team, I happen to be the person with my hands on my keyboard. But you out there, <clears throat> whether you're watching live, you're watching the recording, you're another programmer on my development team. We're going to build this together. It's going to be open source. I'll show you where you can find it on GitHub. I'm going to link it just below in YouTube. There's already a link there to the C Sharp with C Sharp for its GitHub repository. But I have a project that will be available there that you're going to be able to click through to download and start working on and tune, tweak, make it fit a little bit of something that interests you. I want to build something that isn't a typical blog, that isn't a storefront. No. Let's build something that's fun, something that, it, what I encourage folks who are learning, something that will, will be interesting, hopefully interesting to you. It's something you can invest a little bit of time in to add additional features to make it more valuable to you. Um, I'm going to build a website. We're going to build a website together to help manage your collection. Everybody has a collection of something or another. You might collect coins. You might collect stamps. I collect hats. You might collect movie posters, right? You might collect, uh, some folks collect trading cards, right? Maybe your favorite football players on, on trading cards. Everybody collects a little bit of something, right? Um, um, some folks, I have a friend that, that collects uh, fashionable backpacks and um, there's, there's ladies out there that collect shoes, whatever it might be. Um, for a while, I collected those AOL CDs that were on the back of magazines. AOL CDs. That was a thing when I was in, when I was in college and a year or two out of college, I collected AOL CDs and I had a cool collection of the, all the different AOL CDs. And then I realized as as folks started moving away from using America Online, what a waste of my time. So, um, stopped, stopped working on that. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a collection management site, and we're going to add in configuration so that you can configure the collection so that maybe it's not Fritz's hat collection, but maybe maybe it's maybe it's Jimmy's um, Lego collection, right? Maybe you collect Lego sets. That's cool. Maybe you collect and have those available that you can configure and put into a database. We'll learn how to create forms and save data into a database using forms with MVC. We're not going to get to that part today. We're going to get to getting things started, getting data loaded and presented on screen. That's where we're going to focus today. Dennis is here from Paraguay. Ben, 
Uh, oh, uh, uh, is it is it Bennett from Germany? Guten Nachmittag. Good to see you. It's me, Delano. Good to see you in the Netherlands, dialing in on Twitch. Omar from Egypt. Good. To, hello. Welcome in. Elbow cough. What's in? Oh, uh, oh, my elbow's okay. You ran some nodes from the data center there in Pune. Oh, cool. Ragathian says, I can deny the route attributes spread out all over the place. Um, you can do some pretty interesting things with route tables. You can do some pretty interesting things with route tables. Options. There's definitely options. Minimal APIs does absolutely give you a nice way to centralize all of your APIs into one place. Let me finish greeting folks here. We got 25 minutes left on the AMA. William is here from the Dominican Republic. Johnny B. Cat says, it's Monday. The buttons are slowly waking up as well. Um, they are. They are. Where'd it go? I have, there, there it is. Yes. Uh, right? Um, I gotta be careful what buttons I hit because some of these are not licensed sounds. Uh, hello to you, uh, Abanob in Egypt. Lewis, you're in East 2 US. You're in a data center? Uh, Minoj, hello. Can I start the session from Hyderabad, India? Can I start the session? Uh, I'm doing the AMA session. Yes. That's what we do for the first 40 minutes. That's the way, that's the way the show is structured. Um... Rodrigo uh, has a question here. When working with Entity Framework, is it recommended to implement the repository pattern or is it overkill? Um, there's a school of thought that absolutely says it's overkill. I, however, subscribe to another school of thought that says um, Entity Framework with repository, particularly a generic repository pattern, can save me a lot of time can allow me to adjust and shift when my application system changes. Consider out there, friends, if I'm building an application and I wire my website directly up to a database, or I wire my API directly up to a database, and we need to start to scale that application, and we decide, you know what, these database access APIs that we're exposing here inside our web application, we want to put them inside a microservice, put it in a container, and shift it put it over there in another data center. Well, now I need to rewrite all of that. I need to rewrite how I interact with Entity Framework inside of inside of my Razor pages, my MVC controllers, what have you. That's a problem. If I use a repository pattern, I just write a new repository that instead of using Entity Framework to connect out, to go and fetch data, I change it so it uses HTTP clients, and that HTTP client is properly configured so that it knows the address, it's submitted the address, it's submitted all the authentication information so it can connect to my service over there. So do I recommend working with Entity Framework directly or consider the repository pattern? If you know you're going to be maintaining your project for longer than six months and there's a possibility it's going to grow, go with the repository pattern. You're going to be better set up for maintenance and growth of your application system. Not just your application, your application system, your entire system over the long run. Uh, uh, let's see what else is going on here. Mario is here. Uh, cheers from Germany. Guten Nachmittag to you, Mario. Uh, what .net, .NET version am I going to be using today? Asks Moataz. Seven or six. We only work with uh, release versions. We will be working with six. Um, .NET 7 is very, very early. Um, it is not recommended that you work with that in production. So we focus on the release versions. After the release happens, we'll have, some, we'll have a wrap-up stream or two introducing and talking about the new features of .NET 7. But until that time... We stay focused on the release versions that you can use and get full support from Microsoft. And .NET 6, in particular, has um, LTS support, long-term support. You'll be supported on .NET 6 all the way through, is it 2025, I believe? I might have that timeline uh, wrong, but at least 2024 you'll have support. Um, to, to, to Arturo asks, does it make sense to create a minimal API with several layers or should I create a regular one? As soon as you start bringing in additional layers with a minimal API, go create a regular API with 
uh, controllers is where I would suggest you go. Um, good morning to you, William, in the Dominican Republic. Hamed, hello there. Pradeep, good evening to you in Singapore. Late evening there. Hope you're uh, doing well. Miguel asks, does learning Xamarin forms still make sense? Maui.net is around the corner, and I'm not sure what to focus on. Maui is literally going to be released next week. If you're making a decision about whether to learn Xamarin Forms or .NET Maui, .NET Maui is in uh, preview, I'm sorry, release candidate three as of the time of this recording on May 16th. I recommend learning .NET Maui at this point. Uh, Daniel asks about Blazor projects. The concept of layout is a bit confusing because there is first the Razor components, layout, and then top level CS HTML with the HTML skeleton code. I see where you're coming from. I can appreciate that. Um, with Blazor, you have a top level HTML file or a CS HTML file. It's a Razor page that hosts your Blazor application. We see this also with other single page application frameworks, thinking Angular, React, uh, Vue. So you need some place to inject it. So that CS HTML or HTML page, if you're running Blazor as a static application, hosts your application the next layer on top of that then is your blazer application which starts from app.razor inside there there's information about the routing that takes place and if you look at that it specifies that the layout by default at least in the template is called main layout.razor and it sits in the shared folder it's underscore main layout i believe um can you tell can you tell this guy's been written a number of those applications and the router specifies here's the pages to go and load those pages inside them have a default view imports that's loaded every all of them get the underscore view imports loaded um and it specifies here's a bunch of using statements that configures that application uh that page right and and view imports gives all those using statements to the application so you have your view imports you have your app razor, and when you go to load things like index razor, it's going to take in um, what's specified in, I believe it's app start.razor, which specifies other things that you may want to configure that run at application start. And inside there is app start, I forget the name of the file. View start, I'm not, I forget the name of it. Um, look it up, Fritz. You have a couple Blazor projects sitting right here. Inside of that file, right? Let me bring up my one of my Blazor applications here. Um, it's not in pages, it's in shared. Main layout, sidebar, imports, app razor. App razor specifies here's what the layout is as part of the routing. So every one of your pages has that default layout being applied that's specified in app razor. View start is what happens inside ASP.NET MVC. We'll work with that in a minute. So Why do I see a link there? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so you'll find, um, it, once you get to that point, all of your pages just adhere to the same layout that's specified in app.razor. So it does take a little bit to understand it. It bounces back and forth, but it, it will make sense to you. CM Chris Jones, good to see you there on Twitch. Lewis! Hello, uh, Sunwarul. Uh, hello to you in Bangladesh. Diako uh, on YouTube asks, what advice would I give to my younger self? That's a good question. It's a good question. Um, always be learning. Don't give up on... Um, some of the smaller companies that you work for push them um i i say to folks all the time always be learning um take a look at and 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 get into writing blogs writing content creating video sooner than later you're really good at this and you're going to do great at it um thank you for the question vishal is here from india is it farin 
uh, started using Sync Fusion projects that, uh, products. Uh, terrific. I'm glad you found a uh, widget vendor that you like. The community version is free and you love it. Uh, you'd watch how I use it. I do not, on this channel, use any of the, the commercial vendors products. Um, we want to make sure that they, um, they have uh, equal access to content and production here. Um, might be, I, I might be able to arrange something where we give them each a day to show off some stuff. Let me think more about that. A Teams add-on says, Lewis, a Teams add-on for what? Uh, give me a little bit more clarity when folks... Oh, a Teams add-on for uh, eh, the project. I, I do have a recommendation to get into building Teams add-ons. Not... It, it, get back to me in June when we get on the other side of this session, this series. Hamed, hello to you in Johannesburg. A11439, good morning to you. How is the rest of the A1143 family doing? I'm assuming there's a A11438, A11437, A11436 out there on YouTube. I, I don't know. I'm just making this up. Rodrigo, how you doing there? How about I build a project manager? No. Nah. Nah. I don't want to build anything productive. I want to build something fun that folks enjoy and, and can tinker with and, and make their own color put your own styles and css into things jimmy is yeah creating lego collection thing uh stark on on uh, stark tony i think that's supposed to be tony stark on youtube asks did i have any tutoring about microservices going to be learning um we talked about apis i when folks say microservices they they have that loaded with a bunch of architecture concepts as well cqrs ddd event interactions and management um, those things I do not teach on this. You feel old now, Lewis. No. Um, Tural asks, should I choose C Sharp or Java in 2022? You're, you're on a channel that's about to teach C Sharp. I recommend C Sharp. It's a heck of a lot faster than Java and it's advancing a lot faster. What type of architecture will I use? Asks Adrian. Um, MVC. Uh, you seem to collect collections, Smab. <laughs> Your mother-in-law used to collect a lot of garbage, says Ergen Rod. Uh, Chris Jones was thinking of building an office in inventory app so I can find all the random cables. So this collections website, nothing says that you wouldn't be able to extend it to turn it into inventory as well. Um, good morning from planet Earth, says Shaji Shake. Uh, Shake? Uh, how long is this session? Two hours. We go two hours, um, and and we start. We're gonna actually get into the code in about thirteen minutes. Um, uh, on Twitch, La, is it La La Poppy John asks when I have to start learning C ASP.NET Core, what I should know before this? Learn a little. You should know HTML. Um, know a little bit of the basics of C Sharp, and I've got a fantastic series right here on the .NET channel on YouTube. Uh, that teaches the basics of C Sharp using notebooks. My friend Scott Hanselman also has a complete video series on the YouTube channel over on uh, it, about uh, on the .NET YouTube channel about getting started with C Sharp. So, um, Lala for backend development and maybe some smart contracts. Really? Will I cover route tables? We're going to get into routing. I'm not sure we're going to get into tables all the way, but we'll definitely talk about routing. Cheers to you in Greece. I can't read your name there. My apologies. Uh, Adrian, I don't have that much knowledge on Java. Okay. Um, <laughs> a random idea. Make a tag on GitHub for this cohort to follow. Nah, I've got a repository for you, and it's linked in the YouTube video below. Um, is it better with repository pattern or use the service layer as well? No, I wouldn't use the service layer with it. I'd just use a repository pattern. The service layer may come later when you, it, as you increase complexity. That's going to be up to you. Jim asks, entity framework over Dapper? Yes, entity framework. Um, because I don't want to get into explaining SQL. Um, Andy asks, what is the purpose of MVC when we have minimal APIs? Um, to build user interfaces that get rendered on the server. Mario asks, is there a solution to load the HTML part of a Razor page at runtime? 
that's what it does. That's what ASP.NET MVC does. It renders and loads the HTML part. Are these videos going to be available to view at a later time? Asks CBT on Twitch. Yes. Um, there's a complete YouTube playlist, youtube.com slash dot net. Check out the playlist there and look for C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz and somebody linked it there. They are completely archived. Hello to you, Pedro, Pedro, Pedro Vega Online uh, on Twitch in the Dominican Republic. Welcome, Pedro. Um, am I going to use MVC Core and EF Core? Asks Vishal on YouTube. Yes and yes. Um, what are the prerequisites for this session? Asks Amit. Uh, know some HTML, some CSS, and um, a little bit of C Sharp. We'll have fun. Um, all questions are welcomed. Um, good morning to you in Southern California. Dell Tap uh, Phoenix? Is that what that's supposed to be? Delta Phoenix. Ah, okay, I get it. I get it. I see what you did there. Next week, uh, Maui's going to be released. How do I know? Um, next week is Microsoft Build, which reminds me, I will not be broadcasting next week because Microsoft Build. I'll be flying to Seattle at that time. Um, Miguel, you're welcome. Um, you're following the .NET blogs for Maui? Fantastic. Glad to hear it. Following the training from Kenya says Korea. Well, oh, thank you. Appreciate you tuning in. I, I love hearing that we've got viewers from six of the seven continents. Um, I don't expect folks to be viewing from Antarctica. That's it's a little chilly there. Hello, Paul. Good to see you on YouTube. Shauno is here on Twitch with a big wave. Um, will I be covering caching and session management techniques techniques in the sample project? We can. Uh, caching I can definitely get into. Uh, session management, I'm, I'm going to, I would like to avoid session management, but yeah, we're going to get into caching to be sure. Um, Lewis says, I tried adding startup CS a while ago. Don't need to, don't need it anymore. Um, career will be having an interview on Wednesday this week for a software engineer two uh, position. Am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to learn before the interview? I don't know. Where, where are you going to be working as a software engineer two? Do, in Microsoft Kenya, doing what? If you're building Xbox games, I'm not going to tell you to learn ASP.NET. If you're building mobile applications, I'm not going to tell you to learn Windows application structure. Uh, what are you looking to do? Thindall on Twitch asks, how do I get the blue out of my beard? So um, we for I'm raising money for charity for St. Jude Children, Children's Research Hospital in Tennessee in these United States. Uh, over on my Twitch channel, and last week, um, for charity on Thursday, I colored my beard blue. You can go over to Twitch, and you can find the videos from that, but I, I had a blue beard Thursday during my live stream on Twitch. Um, and, and I have temporary hair color that I spray in. Uh, so a little soap and water just rinses it right out. Um, and the more money we raise over there, um, the crazier things we're going to be doing. If we hit, we're, we're at about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars right now. If we hit two thousand dollars American raised over there, um, I'm going to put on a twelve-hour live blazer workshop, back to back to back to back. That'll of course be uh, cut down into a series of uh, one-hour videos and put into a playlist over on YouTube. Um, and and that keeps growing and evolving. Those blazer workshops, I've given them regularly but being there for for a, a one-shot workshop is a really good experience hello uh joade in karachi pakistan welcome in good morning danny how's it going uh malcolm says crud yes crud we're gonna be doing some create read update and delete just look at how distinguished it looks now yes very distinguished um, don't I think usually .NET showcases are kind of boring and bare bones compared to JavaScript showcases, says Diaco. Most of what I see is just beginner f things. If I had an advanced stream that I was doing, you wouldn't tune in. There are 300 people watching this live right now. I work on the .NET team. I work on the Visual Studio team. This is my job. And I'm not just teaching beginner things. 
We start with beginner. We get to intermediate. We save the advanced topics for for some other interesting things. Daniel is on YouTube and saying, I'm using event aggregator in a Blazor project to communicate between components. Is that a good practice? I'm not familiar with event aggregator, so I can't say. Uh, will I show the deployment of the site today? Asks Vishal. Nope, not there. Um, Speak asks, best c .net book. No, don't get a book for it. it. Evolves too quickly. What do I think about Blazor? It's amazing. It's only going to get better as more and more folks do uh, WebAssembly. Uh, Wasm, Wazi, Wazi's picking up steam. Um, and we are just at the beginning of that. Blazor is going to be a fantastic technology as that advances, WebAssembly advances as the, the browser vendors add more capabilities into the browsers and become more accepting of WebAssembly technologies. Five minutes to go. Let's hit the lightning round here and run through the, these things quickly. Adrian, how can I remember what a lot of the build-in methods return? Um, because I read th those a lot. I write a lot of code. Lewis asks, step-by-step -step is better than the A-Press equivalent, in my opinion. XAML's a bit jarring. Totally agree. Life goal for Thindall is get to Antarctica and watch Fritz. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Spring versus ASP.NET Core. ASP.NET Core. Uh, take a look at the... Um, Take a look at the uh, uh, Tech Empower benchmarks. ASP.NET Core is number two with a bullet. Seven million requests a second. Spring isn't even in the same ballpark. Um, hello to you, Frank in Malmo, Sweden. Hello, hello. Jose is here from Portugal and asks, do I think we have a, we can have a wave of people moving to Mac OS due to new chips and Visual Studio for Mac getting better and better? No, I don't. Because the Mac is incredibly expensive. It's not worth it. Half the stuff doesn't work for it because of the different architecture. So your development code doesn't work, is not portable, and will not work on other non-ARM machines. So, no, I don't. I, uh, In working with ARM devices, I, I find them... Um, they're, they're fantastic devices for consumers. The tech is not there yet to work across other processor architectures. Um, shared link to instant API to a developer in house. And he said, very nice. Thank you, Johnny B cat. There's a lot more we have to do there. A couple folks have some pull requests in. We need to review and deploy, but I'm pretty happy with that. Three, three minutes to go. May I have your say on moving from .NET web developer for, to AWS associate? Uh, sure. Uh, what about it? I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, if I have an interview for a single page apps with Angular and .NET, is there something I should know that you think is important? Uh, .NET building with the APIs is going to be a good thing. Learn how to build with controllers. Learn how to build with minimal APIs. It's going to enable your Angular apps to run faster. Hello, Boz in the Netherlands. Hello, aus Berlin to Blood Orange. Guten Nachmittag. There are a couple folks there. I'm sorry, I can't read the, the um, Arabic name there. My apologies. Save the advanced topics for Clip Talk, asks Thindalt. Yes, exactly. Um, and there's other folks that can read and, and, and handle those questions, talking about how garbage collector works, how, how memory management in C Sharp works. They can do a much better job of that than I. I know the topic, but uh, I would defer to some of those folks who, who built those capabilities for advanced topics. What's new in .NET Core? Nothing. We're on .NET 6. .NET Core is the old version 3.1. Doesn't happen anymore. We're on .NET 6, and um, it's really fast, and .NET 7 is going to be even faster. Um, greetings to you in Quito, Ecuador. Good to see you. Quito? Quito. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm terrible uh, with pronouncing some of the uh, foreign city names. My, my apologies. Good evening to you, Yash, in India. Excited coding to start. We're going to get there in about two minutes. Um, no need to buy learning material, says Badger. Get my workshops playlist. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, tuned in from Nairobi, Kenya is Felix. Thank you so much, Felix. Um, judging from the question, some remedial training is required, says Magic Reason on YouTube. And that's why for level setting, in introducing, positioning, and this session is described as beginner friendly, we want to make sure we answer your questions. Otherwise, I would produce a YouTube video, have it recorded sitting out there where I'm not answer your, answering your questions live. Speaking to the instructor, getting that feedback, learning from it, and having this interaction 
is what's so valuable. Folks on the YouTube recordings hate this part of my streams. Like, I've had people say that I am the most worthless content on the internet. Not on YouTube, on the internet. Because I talk to you folks. I think I, I think they're incredibly wrong. One minute to go. You want to see Visual Studio on a pie with .NET? Yeah, VS Code works great there. Hello to you, Lawyer Box in Mozambique. Uh, greetings, Adrian in Albania. Are minimal APIs a lot faster? Ask Jamie on YouTube. Yes. Yes, they are. Answer that question earlier. Hello to you, uh, Asus in Brazil. Thank you so much. Feedback is incredibly valuable, says Madonna. Not worthless. Um, I completely agree. Chris on Twitch. I really want to use Blazor for a modernization project, but I'm wary of steering the project that way because you're afraid of Blazor being abandoned in a few years. Okay. You have listened to the FUD. Congratulations. The fear, uncertainty, and doubt that other folks in other, dot, in, in other web communities are spreading. WebAssembly continues to get investment. WebAssembly, WASI, I forget what the I stands for, is getting even more investment and looks even more interesting. WebAssembly is an HTML standard, and if you know things about web standards, you know they don't get abandoned. Blazor works both on the server, in the browser, using WebAssembly, and starting next week, runs as part of .NET MAUI, so you can build native applications. It's been delivered as part of our um, long-term servicing release in .NET 6. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Um, two, 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 two. Yes, YouTube comments are quite colorful, and I spend more time, about five times as much time, moderating YouTube as I do Twitch. Those are the numbers, friends. Raphael asks, any chances of having Visual Studio on Linux in the future? No plans currently. Um, is this new generation framework in .NET Core? No, it's advanced from .NET Core, and it's .NET 6. Uh, let's do this. WebAssembly System Interface. Thank you, Jimmy Engstrom. Calling out WASI stands for WebAssembly System Interface. Thank you so much. I, I, I haven't spent enough time with it. I, I keep reading about it and read right past. Oh, yeah, it's WASI, and that's it. Let's do this. Let's get into the project. Our time is up for our AMA session. We are going to get into the 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 content here. Let's talk about let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go into it again. We're going to be building a website using ASP.NET MVC so that we have that hands-on project building experience. It's one thing to go through and explain. Here's the topics, here's the things we're going to learn. Let's actually do it and discuss the design decisions along the way. <clears throat> I have my notes. I have my agenda of where we're going to go. After we finish today's stream, I will write up. Here's what we accomplished. Here's the tasks that I went through to do these different things. I will save off and push the current version at the end of this stream into GitHub. Um, <clears throat> and for next time, which won't be next week, we're off next week because of Microsoft Build, We will. Um, I will show you how to have a GitHub action set up to compile your application and we'll get into uh, next time we'll probably get into forms and and managing data and those types of things and and security is going to happen deployment to Azure we're going to cover in a in a future stream um, yeah we have a bunch of topics that we're going to get into and we're going to learn about as we move along here all right let's do this let me finish double checking all the things grab the phone grab the coffee change up the microphone That should be it. There we go. Is that it? Do we have it? No. Why you do this? Yeah, that should be my microphone. Um, test, test. That one's muted. Double check. Hang on, hang on. I, I ran some other configurations here. Uh, ooh. This one, and down here. Yeah, that one, why am I not hearing it? Am I, oh, wait a sec, wait a sec. 
and turn this up. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right. Different microphone plugged into it. I had a, and we need to change that around. That's better. All right. See, you don't get this live tuning things on the on the way here along the way. All right. I've got the phone. Grab the coffee, and uh, let's head over. Let's get into the code and start building this. Start working with this application. See, yeah, head over here. Aha! See that? I've even got the Microsoft logo right there. Um, am I going to get? Nope. For some reason, the teleprompter isn't working my extra screen for the teleprompter, so I'm going to have to look just over here to read and catch up on chat. That's fine. Um, still a little quiet? Nah, sorry. That's not what I'm seeing over here that I'm broadcasting. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. There is no .NET. Well, the .NET, there's the .NET bot mascot that we use. Um, I'll turn up the gain just a smidge. Just a smidge more. Test. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, <sighs> I need a green mouse pad. I need more than a green mouse pad. I need a green tablecloth. Just completely <laughs> drop out the table here. All right, um, so we're going to talk about, we're going to get into building a collections website. And I have this sitting out there on the GitHub, github.com, C Sharp Fritz, C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. You won't have to go into this branch where I was working. That's not the branch. Um, 1203. This will be merged into the main branch before, um, if you're watching the recording, this will be merged in. But down here, I was going to do MVC Part 2 right there. But that's boring. We're going to do the collection website. We're going to go through, we're going to build a website that describes a collection of things, whatever things it might be that you collect. And we're even going to allow you to do some configuration for that. So, inside here is the collections sample website. This is where we're going to be working. Um... Can we do an MVC app from scratch without using boilerplates? Most of the tutorials use a lot of scaffolding with little information on what's going on. Yeah, we're not going to be... We're going to use the initial template, but we're going to end up getting rid of and dumping out most of that stuff. Um, all right. So I mentioned the structure of this folder, how this works, and, and that we're going to be allowing you to build a collection of items. And there is a link to sessions down here at the bottom right there. I also have some information here that I wrote about the design. You're going to manage some basic information about the collection. We'll build the site so you can add and manage items in the collection. Collection. We'll add database capabilities so that you can store the collection items, as well as security to restrict access to the site. There's a lot we're going to be able to add in and do that's going to be interesting and fun as we go through and we add features and capabilities to our little collection site. All right. Um, where should we go next? Where do I want to go next? Let's actually um, allocate and put this down and start working with a little bit of that content. I'm going to do most of my work at the command line with this. Everything that I'm doing today, you can do in Visual Studio. You can do in Visual Studio Code. You can do in Vim. Choose your favorite text editor. You will be able to work there on every machine using the techniques that I'm going to show you here today. So C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. Uh, let's do a git pull so I get all the latest doodads and I am going to do a git checkout track and I want to get a branch for origin 1203. That's where I was working, setting things up for today's stream and when I'm done building here today, we'll merge this into main so that it's available if you're watching the recording. You won't be going down into this branch, okay? So, uh, this is, like I showed earlier, we are in Season Sessions, Season 02, and we're going into the Collection Website folder right there, and it's hiding behind the music. Can we, can we go? Thank you. So, there we go. I'm in the Collection Website folder, 
And I have 1203 is allocated here. And I have a source folder here. This is the version of the application as of when I'm building this. Um, and I've already allocated a solution file and a source folder. Let me remove those, rebuild them, so you know a little bit about where they came from. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Uh, remove item source. Yes, go get rid of that. Uh, remove item uh, my collection. Um, I'm in PowerShell, so I'm doing a remove item. There we go. All right. So at the command line, let's build our MVC application. Let's allocate it so that we can start working with this. We do that at the command line. .NET new. I want to create an MVC application. So .NET new MVC. I'm going to output it into the source folder, and I'm going to give it an initial name. I'm going to call it um, collection website. Okay. Right? Is that what I called it? Make sure I... Right. Yeah, over here. Or did I call it my collection site? My collection site. Fine, I'll call it my collection site. Right there. Okay. So, .NET new MVC. Here's the folder to write it into. Here's the name of the project. Okay. So, it's going to create that and put it into the source folder using the model view controller template, the MVC template. All right. So, there's my source folder right there. There's the content for my application. What's this 29 things that have been changed? That doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm going to create a solution file now. So a solution file is what we use in order to maintain and open inside of Visual Studio, whether it's Visual Studio 2022 and its predecessors, or Visual Studio for Mac. It allows us to open a collection of projects as one unit and be able to manage and work with them. So I'm going to create .NET new SLN, and I will specify a name using the dash N switch. And uh, what did we call this initially? What did we call this? My collection site. So there it is. And it creates and puts that solution file right there. Let me add a reference to that project in the solution. So I will say .NET SLN add source. And it will reach into the source folder, find that project file and put a reference into the solution file you can see it right there okay this is not xml this is a format that was derived many many years ago like 1997 for formatting solutions files that's just the format it it's not intended to be human readable human managed it's intended to be read and managed by visual studio so it's kind of an artifact that's hanging out there Will we be handling duplicate data entry? Uh, not today. We can do duplicate detection uh, uh, next time, perhaps. Um, Zafer on YouTube asks, are there new things in Visual Studio Code and Studio in the coming years? Of course. Absolutely. We're always adding new features. Yes, yes, yes. Um, a tennis racket to clear the screen. What? What? All right, let's do this. So my, my project's allocated, um, and it, it's sitting here on disk. Let's open it in Visual Studio Code so we can take a look and, and start defining a collection and, and a collection item so that we can put those on screen. <clears throat> so I do have my readme here. Here's the agenda that I want to go through today. All right. So we initialized the project. We created the collection file. We're going to define some sort of collection item thing that we're collecting in our project that I want to put on a home screen so that you can see. Here's all the things that, that I collect. Um, we'll create some sample data in JSON format. We'll load the sample data from a JSON file. Um, we'll return those collection items into the view. Introduce configuration and dependency injection because I'm then going to allow you to rename what that collection item is. Oh, look, we have some updates for Visual Studio Code. Um, and then we're going to learn about partial views here as we get through this. Lots of great topics that we're going to go through. And we're already through the first two. So let me head over to the project, sitting here in the source folder. And um, you know what? Let's have some fun with this. 
let's have some fun with this. Let's run .NET Watch so that this is building and rebuilding for us in the background as we build this application. So I'm going to go into my source folder here and run .NET Watch inside my source folder so that as I make changes, it automatically builds and deploys into my browser. So that'll be kind of cool to be able to see those build and develop as we go. Now, chat room, whether you're on YouTube or you're on Twitch, I know you can't kind of see it across the streams. I guess that it really is crossing the streams. It's not just a Ghostbusters thing. Um, chat room, you are my pair programmers. You are. This is mob programming at its best, okay? If you see something that looks weird, if you have a question about why something works the way it does, if you think there's a different way that we can do something a little bit better using ASP.NET MVC and C Sharp, let us know. Maybe we can tune and improve this as we go. And if you want to take some time and play later with the with the source code, you want to tinker with it that we're building here and be able to, to send some feedback, you're welcome to open issues in the GitHub repository, and we'll talk about it next time. All right. Um, will there be a tutorial on Entity Framework Core? We did that a few uh, a few months ago, Felix. But we are going to get into Entity Framework Core, and we will absolutely cover that probably next uh, next time, which will be the week after build. Well, that's Memorial Day weekend here in the states. <clears throat> the first week of June is where we're going to go. Uh, you you want to get a link to the files? Says jo Jojo Nari. Yes, there. It, and I, I can't paste a link into... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, I can. <gasps> I can. I have a keyboard. I have a keyboard. Oh, look at this. I have a keyboard. I can do it. I can do that thing. Um, let me see. If I go over to GitHub over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally working on my teleprompter machine. This is weird. Um, but the files aren't, aren't built yet, right? We're building them as we go. Right, um, but I will give you a link to where this will land for those that are watching right now. I will go into restream chat and paste that. There you go. That's where things are going. All right, and it, it is it is the same as the collection of hats. It's the same, this, the, it's going to end up being a very similar demo, except this is going to be ASP.NET instead of Blazor. All right, so by default, this starts up and says, welcome, learn about building apps with blah, 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 and there's a privacy page here with a privacy policy. Um, I'll leave the privacy page here, but I'm going to clear out the home here, and um, I'll, I'll leave these other things where they are, but let's let's clear out what's in that home in that home view, which is over here, home, index. We learned this is where our views are stored that map up to the various actions inside of our controller. So for this action, um, it already says the thing up at the top in text center. So uh, let's, have the, let's have this say my collection and I will get rid of this paragraph and this should update Thanks to Hot Reload. Oh, there it, it, there it is. My collection. I thought I got rid of the... Oh. Mm, uh, save that. There. Okay. So, cleared up my collection, and we'll put our collection of things down here. Okay? So, um, now I want to define what that collection of things are that we're going to be working with. And Chinmay on YouTube... Chinmay... You are on the ball. You are a step or two ahead of me. That's exactly where we're going to go. I'm going to define a data transfer object called a collection item. Called a collection item. And we're going to load that from some JSON data on disk. I, 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 I don't want to talk to a database. I don't want to talk to a service yet. Let's just start as simple as possible and just load from some data on disk. And that's what Chinmay is asking here. Can I include some process for accessing JSON data on disk? You are correct. Let's do that. Um, 
Uh, Glowy asks, will I show how to deploy apps in a real-life situation? Yes, when we get through. Um, maybe we can even do it as more of a DevOps segment next time, once we get through an initial build here. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, Shuhab says, just saw that 7 is out. No, .NET 7 is not out. A preview version is available. It is not in any way supported. Um, you are not encouraged to use that for live websites. You had some trouble working with multiple models in a view. Um, we'll, we'll be, we're, we're going to show a little bit of that here in just a minute. Um, Gregory White on YouTube asks, is .NET Watch the same as Hot Reload? Um, not quite. Hot Reload is a feature in Visual Studio, but .NET Watch provides that same Hot Reload capability at the command line. There's other things that Hot Reload does as well in Visual Studio that .NET Watch does not do, including things around performance and testing and some of the other tools that are built into Visual Studio. They automatically get reloaded, rerun, and uh, rewired up, reconnected to your to your content when you use Hot Reload in Visual Studio. <coughs> So let me come back to Chinmay's question here. Hey, let's let's take this collection item and turn it into some JSON data on disk and a DTO that knows how to load that. So um, I'm going to go into my models folder here. And there's an error view model here, but I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this collection item.cs. So this is one of my collection items. Um, and this is inside, what's, what's the, what's my, uh, right, it's my collection site. So let's put a namespace in there to get things started here. My collection site, good. And I'm using file scoped namespaces here. And look at this, down here, this is automatically rebuilding and getting ready <clears throat> to run for, uh, run my application as I'm adding content here. So I want to define a collection item. So let's have public class. This is a collection item. Now, I could create collection item as a record. I could. Um, class is a very easy way to reference these things, and it will it it will work with just about all the various um, tools, libraries, and things. And particularly working with loading JSON from disk. When you work with a record, you need to have a, um, I believe it's a parameterless constructor that it injects with. So I'm going to work with a class here so that it loads the JSON and puts that in properly. When we do DevOps with ASP.NET Core, we'll probably be building GitHub Actions. Just for your information. Okay, um, so a collection item. Well, the things that we're going to put into our into our collection... I put my cursor up there. Thank you. Um, I'm using, I'm using, um, what is this? Shortcut text, right? I forget what they call it. Why am I blanking on it? It is, it's, a, it's not a macro, but PROP will generate a property here for you. So the first item that I want to define is some sort of a name for whatever this object is, this collection item. I should probably have a string with some sort of a description of here's what that object is. Um, let's also put a string here with an image URL. I don't want to make it a URL per se, because when it gets persisted to different mediums, it will behave differently. So, yeah, code snippet. Thank you, Omar. Yeah, snippets. Uh, Omar, Ergenrod, and Shahab all, yeah, reminded me it's a snippet. Thank you. Um... Harash, sorry, I'm, I don't know of any right now, but I'm not going to dig into that further. Our AMA time was earlier in the stream. My apologies. Um, here we go. So I have an image URL, description, and a name. Last thing that I want to define is some sort of acquired date. When did you get this thing? So I'm going to put a date time in here and um, an acquired, right? So I, I, I got this hat, I got this thing. So you can also see where did your collection begin and where is it go? Where has it grown? What are some of the new things that have acquired? 
Sector on Twitch asks, should we make those strings nullable? Well, um, I don't want to make name nullable. Description, I'm okay with making description nullable, and I'm okay with making image URL nullable which means that name is kind of required here. Right, I can do... That's not it. That's it. And I'll... Oh, come on. Give me the thing. Give me the doodad. There it is. Using system component model data annotations. This required annotation here, as we saw when we were building with Blazor, allows me to bring in... Well, I, by adding in the data annotations reference here, this means that when we work with the name, it must be specified. Otherwise, data validation capabilities that are built into ASP.NET, into Entity Framework, are going to force it to not be null. It must be specified. So not only can it not be, the, be null, but it also cannot be an empty string. There must be a value there. Douglas asking, are there other templates besides Bootstrap CSS? Um, other folks have made some. They're not as they're not distributed with ASP.NET Core, but you can download some from NuGet. Okay, so right, and that kind of looks weird, um, but I'm I'm okay with it because I do want it to enforce and throw that uh, that. It needs to be specified. What if we don't make the string nullable? Then you potentially could have null values coming in that you're going to have to handle. Um, you can never get rid of the name get set might be null because warning of JSON and serialization requirements. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to enforce that it come that back and forth. Um, it's required. Right, by adding required, by adding this, it should be able to handle that. Now, the next piece, now that we have our model, we know what a collection item is, the next piece that we want to look at is, let's load this data from disk and put it on screen. I'm going to, let me see, yeah, create a controller, we already have a controller, uh, create some sample data in JSON format. So, let's... Um, yeah, let's create some sample data over here. So I'm going to create a folder, right? A uh, new folder. I will call it data. Uh, and I'm going to add a new file here, and I'm just going to call this uh, collection.json. And we're going to put our collection data inside this JSON file so that we read that up and paint them on the screen. You, you saw somebody using ASP.NET with Tailwind. Nothing preventing you from using your favorite CSS framework, favorite JavaScript frameworks as well. Am I expecting name to be unique, asks Smab. I often have more than one of something acquired at different times. Um, not in this case. Not yet. That might be something somebody might want to add later. You can always ask questions there. Cho on YouTube. What kind of front end front UI component do I mainly use? Blazor. My experience using JavaScript library when I have time. I, I love Blazor. I've been using it since it was initially released. It's not a JavaScript framework. It's a .NET framework. Um, but if I might, if I had to had to choose a JavaScript framework, I'm still going with jQuery because there's so much overhead in all the other JavaScript frameworks that I don't need, and I don't want to build an entire build process just to generate and and twiddle strings inside of a browser. Um, fluent validation is best when working with databases. Not not going there. Don't need it. Um, so I'm going to use Bootstrap with what we've got here because easy to use, easy to reference, and it's going to generate the type of layout that I want. So I'm going to have an array of collection item objects in here. And I know collection item objects are going to have up to these four parameters. So let's write some of them in here for an initial collection item. Now I'm wearing an Xbox hat, so let's define for my collection hats. 
So, and I have a collections website out there that has my hat collection in it. I've got some demos and things we're building around that. But we're going to build a, for here, I'm going to use data for my hat collection. Now, in your case out there, we're going to, in the next step after we get this working, we're going to make this so you can configure what type of collection you want to manage, the name of your collection, some of that stuff, so that you can take this website, make some small changes, theme it how you want, and run it to manage whatever it is that you might be collecting. Not hats, but like I said, movie posters, Lego sets, whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to call this Xbox as my for my Xbox hat. Uh, let's say X. See, I feel like putting hat there when it's a hats collection is kind of weird. Um, I need to put a description for my next field. Um, a simple Xbox logo adorns this gray hat with uh, green stitching. Stitching. Okay. Nice. Um, image URL. I don't have an image. I don't have one right now, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And last one was acquired. Now, this needs to be a date. And a date... Um, so, I'm just going to put 2018... I, I don't know exactly when, so I'm just going to say, like, January 1st, 2018. And there's my first object inside my JSON file. Now, how do I load that? How do I display that on screen? That's the next step of this. Well, I've already got my index controller, my home controller sitting over here that my index method loaded and returned that initial view. And you can see here it's building and running the application. If I go over here to my browser, it just says my collection. Well, let's have it load that that initial object, that, that initial collection that has that one item in it and put it on screen. So let's do that. Um, I want to... Let's format my document. That didn't do what I wanted. Okay. So, um, in order to load data from disk, I'm going to use the JSON serializer to point to my data folder over there, grab that collection's JSON, load it up, and deserialize it as a collection of collection item objects. So, let's do it. Uh, I'm going to say var items equals... Here, move that. Move over there. Um, equals JSON serializer. There we go. Using system text JSON. Fantastic. Uh, deserialize. See it right there. We're going to deserialize. Deserialize and serialize. Make sure to make sure that you know what these terms mean. When I deserialize something, I'm taking it from from text from some format that's persisted in in a database, typically on disk. Uh, where have you, right? Maybe it's on at, at, on a web service. I'm taking it from that format and turning it back into a richly typed format that C Sharp and .NET understands. In this way, I can take what was this block of JavaScript notation and turn it into a collection item that I can work with and manipulate as a collection item object on my web page. So, JSON serializer, and I'm going to deserialize. I'm going to use the generic version of it because I'm going to return a collection of these things. And I'm returning an I enumerable, right? We learned about generic collections. I enumerable is a forward only, read only collection of some object type. In this case, collection item. Let me put some carriage returns in there so you can see what's going on because that's kind of wide. All right. So collection item, I need to end that and the next one. And we need some using statements here for using and there we go. Oh, uh, what do we like? What don't we like there? Okay, fine. Fine. I'll do it like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I need to give it parens so we know where to get it on disk it's going to be somewhere on disk like that now i know i'm going to pull it from data what was it collection.json 
and that should give me it, that collection of items. And you can see down here, I'm getting an error. Look at this. Uh, D is an invalid start of the value. B -b 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 line number zero. What don't you like there? It doesn't like in reading the JSON. Why don't you like description like that? Description. Description. All right, what did we run into here? Um. <laughs> It's finding the file, and we're in this this ugly stack trace. Let's see if we can figure out what it doesn't like. Data collection JSON. Let me get rid of these just to see if that helps. Mm hmm. No, still doesn't like it. Where's it seeing this D? Line zero. Yeah. It wasn't those. I'm going to force that to restart. Nope, doesn't like it. And it's D is an invalid start of a value. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what it's... Um, how about implementing a repository for the collection so when swapping the database, you're right, Rodrigo. More about that later. Um, is it Newtonsoft JSON? No, we're using system text JSON. Do I have the JSON file set to copy always? Um, it is seeing, it is seeing the file. I mean, let's force that so that it copies. Um, no, not the solution file. Do, 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 down in here. It should copy because it's in the data folder. Let's do that. Item group. So I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna forget how to do this. I'm gonna forget the format of this. And it's not something that you should have to worry about. Let's do this. Right? Um... Let me see, how can we take a peek at what that... Oh wait, deserialize. I wonder if it's the D right there that it doesn't like. Because I'm trying to give it a file location. Yeah, it's looking at that as a string JSON. Ha <laughs> ha! Mm. I'm trying to give it a file location on disk. Yeah, that's what I did wrong here. That's what I did wrong here. Um, if I do that as deserialize async, right... Um, doo, 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 doo. no. What I should do is give it a file. That's what I did wrong here. So let's say file equals file dot open. Uh, come on, give me my using statement. Let's call this uh, JSON file. Give me. You're not going to give it to me. Why you do this? Come on now. Nope. Fine. Be that way. We'll do it by hand. You still don't like that. Really? Uh, open read. And now the path. Data collection JSON. Okay, so what I did there, what I did wrong there, 
And I should put a using in front of this. What I did wrong there was I was trying to read a file by passing it into the deserialize here. And that's not the signature. The deserialize is looking for here's the string I want to deserialize. I'm giving it now the file object that I'm opening in read mode and passing in there. So now when I scroll down to this, now it's telling me, could not find file, fantastic. Source data collections.json. That's, I thought that's where I put it. Isn't that where I put it? Let's go find it. Let's go find it, right there. Source data collections JSON, right? Source data collection. Oh, Fritz. You wound me. Okay. Hot reload succeeded. There we go. Now it's loading and I have the JSON in there. No hidden characters. Nope, 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 nope. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Nope, no problem with the date time. Yep, you were right, Raphael. So, don't need to do read all text. Open read and it'll grab the whole thing. So, yeah, there we go. All right. So, I have my data. I now want to pass it into my view. So, I will pass it like that. <clears throat> and now those items are going to be inside the Razor file so that I can iterate across them and write them on screen. So let's go over to index. My view, it's in views. Views. Uh, move that. Views. Home. Index CSHTML, right? That's how we find it. I wrote this from my home controller, right? Some folks were having... A little bit of a challenge understanding how to put those two pieces together. I wrote this from my home controller, and it's the index method. So inside my views over here, scroll that down, I'm looking for the view for it. So it's in the home folder, because it's for the home controller, right? We, we take off the word controller there, so we get just home. It's in home, and because this is the index method by default, it's called index CSHTML. Okay. Don't need base directory. I could do that. Don't need it. Um, all right. So my data is loaded. I'm passing it over here to the view. <coughs> and let's, um, let's go through that model. Now, I could do a for each here. For each var item in model in model because it's just that that object that's coming back and I could put a paragraph here and say um, an object in my collection right there and I get an object in my collection but I want to actually go through and read out those objects let me put another hat here in the collection so you see that there's multiples That'll be uh, output. So I'll put a second one here. And for me, this will be... Let me make this my blazer hat. Uh, white hat with purple blazer logo. I'll have an image URL for that. And I got that made, uh, let's say, April... 20th 2019 because I, I showed it off at build 2019 and that was in May so now saving that reload and now I get two objects in my collection but I actually want to put information about those objects on there and I showed you last time how inside of my view I can reference my model and I have I have these <clears throat> these dynamic types that I can reference and output information about this right so I can say model dot name Right, let me put an at in front of that. So model.name. Name isn't a property on model. Model is that collection of whatever object was passed inside that view method. Right? This thing. 
items. Well, items is a collection, so I'm going to receive and go through those, and I know the methods, the properties on the items in that collection. So I'll just say at model.name, and now I've got a problem. What? What do we have? What error do we have here? Um, unhandled exception occurred. Uh, that looks like it's just not behaving right. There we go. Reload. System array does not contain a definition for name. Uh, for each item in model. Uh, oh, item.name. There we go. So now I have Xbox and Blazer. I was doing a for each and referencing the model still. Um, do, do, do. Kind of stressful to code on live stream, says Daniel. No, it's not. I do this all the time. I've been doing it for five years. Can we use a different file name from function via usign attribute? I guess, sure. Um, we could pass that around. Um, yes, we use the using statement to properly close the file and dispose of it. You are correct. Yeah, I had model. It should have been item. Good catch there, Douglas and Daniel on YouTube. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, so now I have... There's there's my two objects being being shared there, but I can do more with this, and I can get a little bit of help. And in how I work with this, by making my model for this page strongly typed. Let me show you what I mean. So model is a dynamic thing here. See, it says dynamic. And it's just going to kind of figure out, well, do I have a property that is that thing that's being returned? And, and inspect and do a little bit of reflection and output that information. We can strongly type this by specifying the type of the model on the page using a model directive so that when we use the model like down here, we get that IntelliSense, we get that help. And, and our compiler will tell us, hey, Fritz, you're working with the wrong object here because it's a dynamic. And, and when we're working with a strongly typed object, we get hard, tight references to exactly those things we want to work with. So I'm going to add way up here instead, I'm going to add a model directive, and the model is returning an I enumerable of type collection item. And it's not just, it's models collection item, right? Where's collection item? Uh, this should be dot models. Okay. And you, you want a, why don't you like the I enumerable there? I know, I know. Type or name, space name, models cannot be found. Um, fine. Right, it was my collection site. And start it. Boom. There we go. Okay. So now when I work with the model down here, right, because I added that model definition that we are working with a collection item object, a collection of collection items. Now, when I work with this, check, check out when I mouse over model, it knows it's a collection of collection items. So the item object here, it knows is a collection item. And that means it knows it has a name property and a description property. All of those things, and it formats and outputs properly. Okay. Those are just first steps. There's more we can do here. Um, <clears throat> using JSON for the database because it's easier. Why are we using JSON for the database? We're starting with just loading the data. We'll advance and grow that and introduce a real database with Entity Framework Core next time. So let's format and put a little bit more data out here for these objects. Now I know in Bootstrap, because we have Bootstrap is the format that we have here, uh, is the CSS uh, framework that we're using here. If I go to Bootstrap, right, get bootstrap.com, I know there's a cards um, API that we can use here, right? I want to do, um, 
right? Not forms, components, cards. And I'm going to build a collection of little cards here with an image and a card title that sits in the middle of it with some description. Okay. So it looks like we have div class card. <coughs> Heck. Heck. Copy that to the clipboard. Let's use that instead and start formatting using that technique. Boom. All right. Uh, width 18 rem. Sure, let's start with that. I don't have an image at this point. Card body. So the card title, I can now say item dot name. I don't want to have an anchor down here at the bottom. But in my card text, right, get rid of all that goo and replace it with item description. And now I've got two cards. I've got my Xbox and my Blazer card. Okay. And it has exactly the text that I keyed in for them. Not bad. All right. Um, there was some other information there about those cards. Content types, body. I want to create a little bit of, a little bit of space in between these. <clears throat> so yes, it, uh, right. The images, right. Um, card image top places an image on the top of the card with card text. So yeah, right. I did card image top. Fantastic. And I don't have the images loaded yet. Um, we could get those images for those two hats. Um, and there's also a card footer. Let's put a card footer on there with the acquired date. Right? There it is. Div class card footer. Let's put one of those on as well. And I'm, I'm just using the syntax for this framework to add in how I want to format my content. So here I'll say item dot uh, acquired. And that'll be created as a card footer. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, item dot acquired. Why is it? Why? There it is. So, and notice they're formatted as really ugly dates. Let's make that a little bit nicer. So, I'm going to specify a string format here. And let's go month, day. Let's see, let's just say month, uh, year, like that. Right? And now it says Jan 2018, April 2019. Easy enough. Easy enough. And I've got nicely formatted over there. Let me grab, I have images for those hats. Let me grab the location for those um, from my existing hats website. I'll just grab the URL for those hats. So I'll go grab my Xbox hat here. Um, I have an Xbox hat here. Where is it? Is it not? It's not on this. Ugh. Okay, fine. Blazor. There it is. Right? That's not it. Not that one. See, and since I have it, uh, flip over. There's the card body, card header. Uh-huh, uh-huh. On the front side is the image. We can do front side, back side too here. I'm gonna grab that URL. Thank you. And I'm gonna put that into my collection for the blazer hat right there. I know I have Xbox in there. Can I can I kind of hack this and just go Xbox? Blob not found. Bummer. I thought I had the Xbox hat in there. It's not PNG, is it? Nope. Huh. And I, there isn't a dash. I didn't do that. I'm not that... I'm not that guy. No, I don't have it there. Alright. No matter. So, now, there's my image URL. Let's put the image URL here item image URL and now I have my hat with the blazer now this is my collection these are the things that interest me and I do want to put those cards kind of side by side and stuff 
uh, grid markup. I want them to go next to each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not sizing utilities. I don't want to use custom CSS or text alignment. I don't want navigation. Hmm. Right? There's like a way to put a deck. I thought they called it. No matter. It's fine for right now. All right. So a follow-up with pagination? We can figure that out another time. We do have the Atari hat. Um, sure, let's add the Atari hat. Right, that was on there. I'll change that from Xbox to Atari. Right? Yeah, there it is. Cool. I can do that. Um, and I'll put, I'll even... Black hat with the classic... Atari logo and uh, Japanese text for Atari under the brim, right? And I'll just grab that image and paste it there, close that, back over here, refresh, and now I've got the two hats showing up. Okay, we've got that. I've got about 10 minutes to go here. Next thing I want to do is I want to introduce... Um, a view partial to this. So a view partial is a way for us to take a block of razor, put it into a separate file, let it live over there, and we can consequently reference it in other places without having to carry that huge block of markup around. So what I'm going to do is inside my shared folder here, I'm going to add a new file, and I will call this hat card CSHTML, and I'm going to specify that this takes a model that is a my collection site models collection item, and now I can go back to let's get rid of home controller. I can go to this, cut that, paste it here. And let's change everywhere it says item. I'm going to do a control H here. Replace, take item and replace it with model. Do that in all the places. And now I can reference and use this. A partial view is like a blazer component. Yes. So now I have my model outlined here. I can, why don't you like that? It does not exist in the namespace dot model. Sure it does. Uh, collection item, not collection model. There we go. Um, over here in index, now for each, I can say at, uh, is it render partial? Partial. I thought it was render partial. HTML dot render partial, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. And I could pass into it the name of the partial which is underscore hat card. And I start it with an underscore so that you can't navigate directly to it. And I need to pass it the model that it's going to receive. And the model it's going to receive is just item. And why don't you like this? Do, 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 do. Yes. Why don't you... What am I doing wrong? Can I convert from void to object? No. It says collection item nullable. It's not void. Can the main page and partial have separate models? Yes. Yes, it does. I'm not sure why I'm getting that that's void. Item is clearly a collection item object. It's not null. Um, it, yeah, I think it, it is it just HTML partial. Ah, that's what it is. 
and now I get the same content. But what I've done is that uh, I render partial and partial do two different things. So by saying html.partial, I'm specifying go find this view hat card, which is sitting over here, apply that item as the model to it. So now I have all the formatting over here and I can reuse that uniformly across my application. So here's my two bits of hats that I have. Let me see how much time do I have? 10.54, we have five minutes. Let's create a repository. Um, nope, don't need the full name with extension CSHTML. Can I compare com partials? Can you compare partials with view components? Um, view components are a bit more component. They, they behave very similar, similarly, where a partial is just a block of view script that you interact with. A view component can have business logic in it. It's more like a razor component that can do more in there and be a little bit more interactive with events, properties, that you and methods that you interact with from outside the component as well. Where a partial is literally just a, a chunk of template that you're using. Um, let's add a, where is it? Uh, under models, I'm going to add a new file and I will call this um, hat repository CS. We'll put this in a namespace of my collection site models. Thank you. Uh, public class, right? Hat repository. Okay. And I'm going to create a method on here that will return an I enumerable of collection item objects. And I'll just call it get. Right? And I need to return that. Well, I'm going to go back over here to my controller and uh, home controller. I'm going to grab this where I went and loaded the data. Don't do that over there. Put it over here. So if this changes later, no big deal. No big deal. In fact, I'm just going to return right there. Okay. And possibly null reference return. Uh, no. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for right now. So now inside of my home controller so that I can get a hat repository object to work with, I'm going to inject a hat repository. You can't see it over there. Let's put some carrot returns here. And I will call this repository and I will control dot and create a field for that. There we go. So now down here in my index, I can say var items equals repository get. And it will get those. All the logic to go get that data is now over in my repository object, but it doesn't know how to load a hat repository yet. We need to register this with our dependency injection uh, container. So, I in here, builder services, I'm going to add a transient object, and that is going to be my model, mm, uh, my collection site models hat repository. By adding that definition, now it knows how to build one of those things. Now it knows how to go and hand that off into my application. I need to rebuild and now this is all properly isolated with a repository object that has all the considerations for how I work with my data. An index page that knows how to work with that repository to get the data. It hands off to a view those models, the model that is the shape of the data we loaded from disk. Inside that page, it knows how to do that for loop and hand off to a hat template how it's going to format these cards. And we're going to talk about more of that next time. Oh, man, we got through so much. I'm going to commit this and get it added into our repository. And then we're going to get into some configuration. We'll get into some logging. We'll get into actually saving and working, working with this stuff in a real database. But for now, we are out of time, friends.
Oh my goodness, we are out of time. It has been a fantastic first run through getting our collection website running, getting it out there and behaving properly. I'm going to get that committed into source control so that you can check it out so that you can work with it. But for now, we need to call it a day. I will not be back next week. It is Microsoft Build Week. Um, so you will you will not see me. Um, but I will be back not the week after because that's Memorial Day. I'll be back the week after that. So we'll be back in three weeks. We'll pick up and run with our collection website, building and doing some more cool things with that. But for now, those of you that are watching me on Learn TV, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and you enjoy the next show. Those of you that are watching me on YouTube, I have a ton of great videos here. All the videos from the series are archived and available for you to watch on the .NET channel, as well as all kinds of great material for you to learn. And we've got videos from .NET Conf. We're, we're going to have videos from Build 2022 available as well all of our events you can find right here on the .NET YouTube channel videos from our learn live sessions as well as well as uh, all of our other shows that we run the community stand-ups all of those you can find right here on the .NET channel and for everybody who's hanging out over there over there on the Visual Studio Twitch channel I think it's time for a raid let's set up let's go find somebody else who's doing some other cool tech and things tech and things over on the big Twitch TV network. Somebody to get you connected with and uh, talk a little more tech, a little hang out and have some fun. And as I poke around here, um, fantastic. I see our friends from on the Code It Live channel are talking about all things Blazor and .NET Maui. Let me get you connected over there. If you're watching on Twitch, stay tuned as we get connected to the Code It Live channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I really enjoy speaking to you, hanging out with you, writing code together with you, and I hope that writing this, this sample application is something that you enjoy and uh, we learn from together. Um, I will see you in June. I hope you have a fantastic rest of May. Wherever you might be, I wish you good health, good coding, and I'll see you in June. Take care.